Because if, that's why we needed desperately a Savior. So Mary understands that he's the Lord. She probably even understands that he's the Savior. But she doesn't get it that he has arisen from the dead. And so here she comes. Mary. And remember, she's acquainted with angels <laughs> of the wrong type. Because she's been possessed by seven of them. Right? And she comes to the tomb. It's a great thing. Now I'm not big one on uh, the things that are going on today in the culture with the woke stuff that go I don't I don't I don't go with that at all, okay? Not a bit. Uh, Jesus loves the man and he does love the woman. Okay? And when we get to heaven, Jesus said there's no difference. There's no man or woman. Whoa. We're just we're just his 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 angels. You know, we're like the angels, he said. Okay? We're his people. Now um, so he loves you if you have a heart for him. Now there's different roles for men and there's different roles for women because Jesus Christ is the creator and he, has, he told us what our roles are. And he also equipped us for those roles. But Mary now is coming. She's a believer. She loves Jesus. She's followed Jesus. She's been very faithful. She's been supporting Jesus with her, with her money. Okay? She's a big supporter of him. The first day of the week, come, with the, many people did that. So the first day of the week come with Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, and, and she came to the sepulchre. Now that's the, that's the, 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 um, the grave, okay, the tomb. And, and see it, the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Now something has happened here. Something amazing. <laughs> something very wonderful that Mary doesn't know about. An angel, not a demon, <laughs> you know, one of the two-thirds, you know, came. And that whole place must have just lit up with his light, you know. Now the the the, um, the 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 sepulcher was being guarded, Jesus, um, by hell's minions. You know, um, they were told that Jesus Christ was going to rise from the dead. Jesus was saying this to everybody. His disciples didn't understand it, but his enemies did, and so they put gods outside Romans outside, soldiers outside and they've got their swords and they've got their their, their, their their lances, you know, and they've got their armor and they're just going to take out of the tomb and say that Jesus has risen from the dead <laughs> and if Jesus tries to get out, they're probably going to try to kill him too, you know and this angel appears and they are scared stiff you ever been scared stiff? You know, standing in the middle of the street and your, your father and your mother are saying, Get out of the street! Get out of the street! And you said, You know, can you see the thing coming? The truck coming? And your daddy has to run out or your mother has to run out and pull you out of the way? Well, these, these soldiers, brave as they are, centurion among them probably, what happens? They're scared stiff. You know? And the angel, it would take several men to roll this, 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 um, boulder, rock, carved stone, door, out of the way. It's, it's, not, it's dropped into a little crevice even, you know, that they've dug up. You can't move it. But the angel can move it. Now whether he just said, Shh, move, <laughs> or he went over there and he pushed it, he could do it. The, the, the soldiers can do nothing. And they roll away the stone. And Jesus, Jesus, rises from the dead. Okay, he comes back. And there's, there's an empty tomb there. Okay? Now, this is the mercy seat. And uh, Jesus has a job to do. He's going to go to heaven. He's going to drop blood on the mercy seat in heaven. He's going to go to hell. You know? They won't, they won't profit by it. Once you die, you're dead. You know? You, you're either, you either know the Lord or you don't know the Lord. Okay? But he's got a lot to do. But Jesus Christ is, is, is for three days. Now, so Jesus Christ is not dead. In the God part of Jesus Christ, always will, was, always will be. And God the Father has never left the throne. He's right there. He's always on the throne. Okay? His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One essence of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, His soul, like your soul, will never die. Okay? Death. And so they're told, look, <clears throat> you won't be put to death. Tell a different story. Okay? It's a different story. 
you know, the, 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 and, and we're, not, we're never going to tell about the angel. That, that story is, but that story did get to us. We I mean, did get to us, praise God, for the scriptures. We know what really happened. And, uh, and, and, and she, she, so then Mary runneth and she cometh to Simon Peter and that other disciple whom Jesus loved. <laughs> now there's the pride of, of the writer of this book, of this particular, we have several different renditions of this story. But this is John's story. And he, he writes this later in life. He lives to be longer than the others. He's, he's been, he, he is very close to Jesus. Jesus, when, when he was on the, on, on the cross, he called Mary uh, over and he called John over and said, you know, this is your mother, this is your... You know, they, they, he gave the charge of Mary over to John. He's just a very great relationship to John and him. Have. John would take care of Mary, the mother of Jesus, for the rest of her life. And John would be the only, of the twelve disciples, John would be the only one that, um, that would not die a violent death for his faith. Okay? He would, now he would be boiled in oil, but he would live. Or, or, he, would go, he would go break rock on the Isle of Patmos, but he would live. Okay? He's not going to be crucified. He does have a special relationship, but here he's bragging about it. He doesn't want to say it's Peter and John, John, he's John, you know. He says, that other disciple, whom Jesus loved. Well, do you feel a special relationship with God? Do you feel like, man, God is just, just loves me so much that he died on the cross for me. And he cares about everything that I do every single day. That's what I'm saying about my life. And you're saying the same thing about your life, because that's true. Jesus knows you in a personal, real way. And that's what he wants. He wants a personal, real relationship with you forever and ever. 10,000 times 10,000. He wants a personal relationship. He can carry it on. No, I can't. As you know, I can't carry on two conversations at the same time. I, I remember when I was a school teacher. And, uh, and, 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 and one girl raises her hand and she says, can I go to the bathroom? And I'd say, yeah, go ahead. And five girls would get up to go to the bathroom. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was fifth grade teacher. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you doing? Uh -huh. Well, you said we could go to the bathroom. No, I said she could go to the bathroom. Well, you said, I had my hand up too, you know. And so I couldn't carry on. So I said, okay, for, when, you, when you want to go to the bathroom, you raise your hand, I will point to you, I will say, Sally, or whatever your name is, Bill, you know, go to the bathroom, and that one person can go. Because I can't carry on conversation with all of you at the same time. Okay, Mr. Katamaturi, we understand. All right? Well, with God... He can carry on conversations with every single one of us. Right now, there may be a million people praying to God and he can understand it and carry on a personal relationship with you. That's why Jesus can be, God can be a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I can't be a trinity. I know that, I know that I'm a body, mind, and spirit, you know, but I'm not, but I'm just one and I'll always be just one. But God is a, is a P with a capital P. And he's very special. He wants that personal relationship with you and with me. When you pray, God is listening. He's hearing. He's not having angel number one putting it on his, you know, his teletype or his, his, his computer. He doesn't need a computer to, to keep track. God is God. He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He created the entire universe. Everything that is, is his. He created it. Don't worry about aliens suddenly appearing in the sky, you know. If aliens suddenly appear in the sky, God owns them. God created them. They are his beings, okay? Because he created everything that is. I don't want to kill the sci-fi sci industry or anything, you know. Enjoy your, your movies and all that. I do too. But I don't believe any of it. I know that Jesus Christ is master of everything, okay? Okay, let's get off that rabbit. So, so uh, whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, they'll, they've taken away the Lord. So they, these two um, uh, are there, and uh, when, when, when Mary comes and tells her story, they have taken away the Lord. Lord? She knows who he is. She's been walking with him. She's seen Jesus Christ call Lazarus just six days before. Be called back to life, out of the grave. She saw, she saw Jesus stop a funeral procession. 
when a young child was being uh, buried, start the procession, bring the child back to life, and give the child back to her mother. Right there on the street. She seen Jesus cleanse her of demons. She seen Jesus cleanse others of demons. She seen Jesus cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear. She seen Jesus do all of these things. These men have seen it too. They've seen it all. Be, the, you, the books couldn't couldn't record all the miracles that Jesus did, and so they have taken. All right, so we all know that John can run faster, okay? <laughs> That's a little brag there, okay? And, but he doesn't go in. He just looks in, and he looks into the, into, the, in, into the tomb, and everything's in perfect order. It's just great. I mean, it's just real. See, there, there used to be, a, in, 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 the, in the Holy of Holies, you'd have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, or the, 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 uh, the Ark of the Covenant, there, there would be a rendition of a seat, the mercy seat, and then there would be an angel, a statue of an angel on either side. The mercy seat in heaven's like that, okay? And, uh, and, 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 and one day, uh, I believe that we'll find that ark, okay? Solid gold sitting there, okay? But this is, this is the, the tomb, but it really takes, it's that same thing. It's the, it's the angels on either side. And, uh, and he looks in, he sees it, but he doesn't go inside, and Peter goes inside. And so it says, he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then comes Simon Peter following him, he's behind him, you know, he's, not, he's slow, and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lie. So he goes inside. Everything's in order. And it says, he believed. And it, it, it says, in the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes. So when you wrapped up that person, I did this in Sunday school for the kids, I wrapped up a doll, you know. And so you could see the, 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 the linen clothes are in perfect order. And the napkin that was over his face is folded and put to the side, okay? And what that means when the master in the house in that day and age would fold it, it means that he's coming back, okay? It's coming back. And Jesus Christ is coming back, my friends. Now, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions, and if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Remember? And Thomas, again, doubting Thomas, oh, Well, we don't know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way. Thomas said, Well, just show us the Father. Uh, jo uh, um, um, uh, and... and uh, and, and, and Jesus said, uh, oh, where, where have you been, you know? I've been with you for three years. If you know the Father, you know me, okay? That's who Jesus Christ is. And he's going to come back. I believe in the rapture. I, I believe it's very close. And, and I believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back. Uh, we're going to go through a, time of, a, a tough time, uh, a, 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 a seven years of tribulation. But I, I believe that you and I will be out of here. We'll be, we'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb, Revelation. Um, but uh, but uh, and, and he's going to live and reign on this earth for 1,000 years. But we'll get into that. That's a whole other sermon. But he is going to come back. But you know what? When you die, I'm a little older than a couple of you. You know? And so I might die before you. Right? But that's my rapture. I didn't live to the rapture. But that's my rapture. Right then, Jesus is going to come and receive me into heaven. You know? Don't worry about where, where I am. I'm in a much be better place. About where, where I'll never be more alive than the day I die. I'll have a, a richer, greater relationship with Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. Wonderful. You don't have to be fear, fearful of death. So... Yet, when he not, so, um, so he sees the, the linen clothes lying. Now, the, other, the rest of it is just all, where it was wrapped around Jesus. Now, if they had come and, if, this, if, if someone had come and, and, and taken that, that body away, they'd be all, they'd be all a, a, askew, you know? But they're in perfect order. It's just as if Jesus just passed right through the, 
The Shroud, yeah, that's where they get the Shroud of Turin, Turin and all of that. That's right, that's where they get that. Whether or not that's actually the Shroud of, uh, the shroud of Turin is actually the, uh, the body of Christ, but they feel like the, the body passed right through the grave clothes. That is what happened. Jesus Christ passed right through the grave clothes. Whether the Shroud of Turin is real or not, I'm not going to get into that debate, you know. Uh, how could I do that? But, but I do know that Jesus passed through the grave, and they're still in place. And that's why Peter went in and John eventually gets there. He looks in, then he gets in. But they believe. They know. They know it. All of a sudden, it all comes to life. Wow, what Jesus had told us. You know, he, wrote, he came back from the dead. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We're saved, saved, saved. He's alive. Mary still doesn't quite get it. So, and so, then went in also that other disciple, which came first in the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. That's verse 8. Remember that one. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. But they knew he, something had happened. He had passed up. We are saved, saved, saved. Now Jesus is going to make it more clear to them as time goes on. But he had already told them all of that. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. You know, <coughs> Jesus Christ <coughs> at Pentecost, <coughs> <coughs> they're going to receive the full power of the Holy Spirit. That's, we'll do that later. Okay? And then they're going to understand all these things. In John chapter 14 through 16, it, it says that another of, a, of the exactly the same kind, Jesus said, I have to die because another exactly the same, that's the Holy Spirit, is going to come. He's going to make you aware of everything. Do you know how you understood the scripture? As I read the scripture, you're saying, oh, pastor, we know all that before we read that. How do you know what it means? I wasn't there to explain it to you. You understand it because the Holy Spirit enlightened you. Okay? The writers of it, uh, they were inspired. When you read it, you were enlightened by the Holy Spirit that lives within you. That you receive when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I, I've talked to people that come to church for years and they do not understand. They're also not saved. And it's very clear by their living that they're not saved. And they don't understand it. And you read it to them and they say, I don't see that. You read it to them, I don't see that. This is what it means. You go, I don't see that. They can't get it. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. But if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are enlightened. You can read the Word. That's why a Christian should read the Word every single day. Read some of it. If it's just five verses, read it. Understand, let God work on your mind all day. He'll enlighten you and show you deeper and deeper truths. Uh, and the more you think about it, the more you understand it, the more you'll, you'll just rejoice in what God is telling you. Because you have the Holy Spirit living within you. So, for, we, for as yet they knew not the scripture. That we, so that, they're going to receive the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They'll understand it better. Then the disciples, of course, they're also going <laughs> to, Jesus is going to come and tell them per, fresh, face to face again. Then the disciples went away, again into their own home, but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping as she wept she stooped down and looked in the sepulchre she still said oh they've taken my safe my sake my lord they've stolen his body oh no and I had such I wanted to worship at his at his grave and he seeth two angels in white sitting in the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus lay that's the mercy seat there's the angel at the head and at the foot. Right there, just as we see in Old Testament scripture. There's the living angels right there. And they say unto her, Woman, why are you weeping? <laughs> hey, they don't have a savior. <laughs> Can you imagine the angels, you know? Uh, 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 one third of the angels have fallen, two thirds. Did I get that right this time, guys? Two thirds are still alive, right? And uh, they have never sinned. But, they, but the one-third that are lost are lost, lost, lost. They do not have a Savior. Why are you weeping? Jesus has come back from the dead just as he told you he would. He has. And she's weeping and she's crying. Oh, my. And, uh, and because they have taken away the Lord, she says, in verse 13, they've taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. Do you all know where Jesus is? He's in heaven. Where else is he? In your heart. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. And she thought, 
Well, there's the gardener. <laughs> I'll ask him. <laughs> He'll know. He knows everything. He'll tell the gardener will know what happened to, to the body of Jesus. And so she turns back, and there he is, the gardener. But it's really Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Have you ever heard God speak to you? You will know. Now God speaks to us in many ways. Some people hear him in a visible voice. Uh, an audible voice. And if he does, do what he says. Okay? <laughs> I once, I once I had a lady, and she was, um, she was a, like a, she played football, you know. She had, she had uh, all these big, handsome sons, and she was the youth leader in our church. But she played football and everything, and so I always thought of her as a great youth leader, and, you know, rah, rah, go out and play the games with the kids. And she said to me, Pastor, I want to lead the nursery. And I said, no. You are, the great, you are a great youth leader. You and your husband, you're doing a great job with the youth. Stay with the youth. This is in Cleveland, Ohio. And, uh, and so uh, she said, no, Pastor. I, 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 I am, uh, God has told me that I am to be the, um, the nursery director. My wife had trained a bunch of the ladies to be nursery directors. She had gave classes, and, and she was one of the students, and she had learned it. And so she felt, but she said, God told me. So, oh, oh, now she's starting to hit me with the heavy, the heavy weaponry, you know. I said, oh, come on now, uh, you know. <laughs> no, you stay where you are. She said, listen, I was in the back of the church. God's audible voice tell me that I am to lead the nursery. What am I going to say? I'm just the pastor, you know. She heard an audible voice from heaven. So I said, okay, you'll be the, you know, I'll, 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 I'll appoint you. And I don't, you know, you get elected by the church, but I'll, I'll go along with that. And she was the best nursery director I ever had. She was wonderful. She was just unbelievable. Well, no, it was believable. Because she had heard the audible voice of God. So when Mary hears the audible voice of Jesus Christ saying, Mary, he, she understands. And all of a sudden, it all comes to life. See, she has already had experience with spirits. She's had seven devils living in her. And now she sees two angels. And now she has Jesus Christ who has come back from the dead. It's the risen Christ say to her, boy, I'll tell you, Mary had a, quite a life, didn't she? When the risen Christ, woman, you know, why is she called woman? Because you, you ought to know by now. Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the God, and saith unto him, Sir, if thou have, have, have borne him hence, tell me where thou have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. And she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus says, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended as, uh, to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascended from my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, that he had spoken these things unto her. And that same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them, saying unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. They were his disciples glad, and they, they, they saw the Lord. Then, sees, then, then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. What's the first thing he tells his disciples to do? Matthew 28, 19 and 20. He says, Go and tell others. This is for others. My friends, after salvation, why didn't Jesus just take me out of this world? I was ready to go. When I received Jesus, this is great. You know, I know the Lord. I've got eternal life. I'm going to have fellowship with him. And I always wondered, God, why did you leave me? Now I was glad of it. Because I, I like, I, I love my wife. I want to see my kids grow up. You know, God had lots of for me to do. But I always wondered, why didn't he just take me right out? But that was the reason. When, when I got saved, God said, go. And you might say, well, you're the preacher. You was told to go. Guess what? God tells every single one of us the very same thing. Tell others. Okay, go to all the world and what? 
preach the gospel. That means to everybody. That means to the male, to the female. That means to the black, to the white, to the to whatever. The, to, to every country of the world. God, they're all God's children. God loves all of them. He wants them in heaven with him. And <clears throat> at the time Jesus Christ came, there was only about as many people in the whole world as there are in the United States. Okay? That was spread out over the whole world. There's going to be billions and billions. Now there's seven billion. Seven, it's, it's approaching now eight billion. It's going to eventually in your lives, the young people, it's going to reach eight billion and beyond people. And talking about third or two-thirds, there's more than two-thirds of humanity lost. There's billions and billions and billions out there that are lost people headed for hell and God loves every one of them. So he says to the disciples, go <clears throat> and tell what you know to all the world. And, there's <clears throat> and then of course, there's, uh, there's old Thomas. Uh, when he, he wasn't there when that happened. He says, well, you know... <laughs> I'm not going to, all the disciples say, oh, Jesus has come back, he's alive, he's alive, and we're all going to live forever, and we've we got work to do, and all of them are going to be martyred, except for John, you know. And old Thomas is saying, I won't believe until I see the wound in his side, and the wounds in his hands, and the wounds in his feet, and I can put my hand right in him. Because I know he didn't come back from the dead until I... Can, I have to be proven. It has to be proven to me. And so for seven days, really the eighth day, that man is in gloom and doom and he has no hope. That's the way the world is today. They know about Jesus, but they don't believe in Jesus. We raise our children up. We think, oh, we got them baptized. and really, But so often they walk away and they say, no. Nah. I don't believe all that stuff, you know. I went to school and we learned different things. You know, we, we learned that the world's older, you know, than what you believe. And, 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 and we're descended from monkeys? I don't know about you. Well, they say, you know, there's a common ancestor and all that. I got a little education. But I, I know that, that I'll take the Bible over the world's interpretation of what's happened in the so many people today are confused and they are lost <laughs> and we've got the truth and we need to go out and tell. So Thomas, so Thomas said, I won't, I won't believe it until I actually see it. Eight days later he walks, he, he's, he's with the disciples and guess who walks in? Jesus, well he doesn't walk in, he just kind of appears. <laughs> you know? He just kind of comes through the walls, you know. All of a sudden there's Jesus. Oh! You know, and, and, and you know, all of a sudden all that falls apart. He calls Jesus, my Lord and my God. Show that to a Jehovah Witness when they come to your door. Oh, Jesus is Michael the Archangel, you know. Well, that's funny because my Bible says that, that Thomas said, my Lord and my God. That's who he is. Jesus Christ is the king of the universe. He's God himself. That he loved us so much he became one of us. And he became flesh. And now he, he's, he's, he's taken the, the throne of David, man's throne of the world. And, 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 and that's what's going to be the capital of the world. It's going to be in Jerusalem for a thousand years. And he's combined it with the heavenly kingdom of heaven. What a, he really loves us. To, to elevate us to that wonderful point. How much God loves us. We need to stay uh, and believe and to tell others about the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. There's so much more I want to tell you. But it's time to go. Okay? So, if there's someone here that does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you'd like to uh, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. The Bible says, says that anyone can do that. See, the first thing you have to know that God loves you and wants you to be in heaven with him. Why, why would he send his son? Why would, it was actually God on the throne. That's how much he loves us. Identifies with us. So God wants, loves you and wants you to be in heaven with you. But you have a problem. You're not going to like what I say. But the Bible says it. He says we're all sinners. By nature. And by choice. You can't just say the devil made me to it. Who said Flip, Flip Wilson? You say, so Flip Wilson, is that the right name? Yeah, I used to say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> well, okay, by nature and by choice, you, you can't blame the devil. 
by choice for all sinners headed for hell. But God made a provision, and that provision is Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You can give all your money to the hospital, you know. You can chase after Allah or some of the other gods that the man has created, or the sun god. It won't do you any good. Jesus is the only way. The cross is the only ladder to heaven. No other way. Christ. See, that's the last part. All that was God. Last part is, God opens your heart. The Holy Spirit opens your heart. Here's all you have to do. Receive Him. Accept Him. Yes, Lord. I turn away from my sins. Make you the Lord of my life. I will serve you, not my will, but your will for the rest of my life. And you have eternal life with God in heaven. So we invite you to come today and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you do not know Christ. We'll sit down with you. We'll pray the sinner's prayer with you. You can leave this place knowing that if you were to die today, you will go to heaven. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Yeah. If you die without Christ... There's no second chances. There's no second. You don't, you don't get a second chance after death. Oh, I should have done it. I knew about it. I should have done it, but you know, I, had to, I needed a new car and I needed to steal a little money or something, you know. I couldn't do it. <clears throat> you know, or I had someone that I was living with and, I, you know, I, I couldn't, I didn't want to marry him and so I, but I want to stay with him so I can't receive Christ. There's all kinds of reasons that man has. Oh, they're just so intense, so real. But my friends, <clears throat> Is anybody here who's received Jesus Christ that you regret it? I've never met the person who said, well, I'm so sorry I received Jesus as my Savior. I've never met... I've met people say, I don't think I can do it right now. What if you just take a step, receive Jesus, and watch how Jesus puts your life back together. Watch, watch what Jesus can do in your life. It'll be better, I promise you. And I've never had someone come back and say, well, you were wrong, it's not better. I've never had anybody come back and I'll say, oh, you were right, oh, I'm so happy. My life began when I received Jesus as my Savior. You come forward and receive Christ. Perhaps there's somebody here today that wants to rededicate their life. You say, I received Jesus, but you know, over the years, kind of sin crept in. And I, this came into my life, drugs came into my life, sex came into my life, money, I needed money. Oh, root of all evil. I needed all these things. No, you didn't. You thought you did. You know, but they all came in and now I want to rededicate my life. I want to come back to my Lord and Savior, Jesus. I, I want him back. You can rededicate your life. You didn't lose your salvation. You've just lost your joy. So come back and get your joy back. Rededicate your life to Christ. Whatever your need, we invite you to come as we sing.